Welcome to the President's Diary, a weekly program where we highlight the work of His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali. President Ali on Monday, March 1, accompanied by Vice President Dr. Bharat Jagdeo, met with permanent secretaries at his office on Shiv Chantrapal Drive. The President received updates on current projects from these officers. Discussions also included timelines for completion. The President has promised to deliver substantial infrastructural changes during his time in office. He continues to promote nation building as his main goal. On Tuesday, March 2, on the first anniversary of the March 2020 general and regional elections, President Ali announced that a new national award, the Order of Democracy, will be instituted. His Excellency said the names of the recipients of this prestigious award would be announced later this year. In his address to the nation, President Ali said in order to ensure that political, civil and human rights are protected and Guyana prospers, then democracy must be preserved and strengthened. Consistent with my declared policy of keeping you, the people of our country, fully informed of my actions and the reasoning behind such actions, I advise that I propose that the nation should honor, for now and all time, courageous persons who defend democracy in Guyana. Democracy, the head of state says, is vital for the freedom of people, for human rights, including freedom of the media and freedom of expression. I want this generation to ensure that democracy is preserved for us and that it is never lost for future generations. All of that was at stake last year. We experienced a dark time when we were made to walk through a deep valley in which the shadow of autocracy at home and ostracism from abroad hung over us. President Ali has called for the repositioning, restructuring, rebranding and reorganizing of the Guyana Police Force to better serve the interests of the people. The head of state was delivering his feature address on Thursday morning at the opening of the Police Officers Annual Conference hosted at the National Cultural Center. The successful repositioning of the GPF, the president told the gathering, hinges on how effectively the advancements in the security sector can match those in the legal system. In restructuring the force, Dr. Ali said the goals must be effectiveness, responsiveness, clarity of vision, and a singular approach confined to service to the people. It must not be a top-down, top-heavy approach. It has to be an integrated approach where every level is threatened to operate at its optimal level. That begs the discussion on our organizational structure itself. What was the structure designed to achieve as against what is needed in today's society and the future for our country? Is it optimal? Are there recommendations that we may come up with? Rebranding of the GPF, President Ali said, is an important component of improving its image locally and internationally. The expertise of strategic marketing professionals, he noted, is necessary to ensure the success of the rebranding process. We need to retool. Identifying training needs. Having a gap analysis done in relation to what training is required and building a training program that responds to that gap analysis. Not the traditional training program that you go through all the time in a monotonous way. The training has to be linked to something. It has to be linked to that gap analysis. President Ali reiterated his government's commitment to the upliftment of the force. At the end of the conference, the head of state anticipates a refreshed police force that is more people-centered and flexible to respond in a changing global environment. President Ali says the opposition APNU-AFC needs to explicitly recognize and acknowledge the legitimacy of the PPPC administration. The president was responding to questions posted by the media on the sidelines of the police officers' conference regarding discussions with the opposition on Guyana's territorial integrity and engagements with international oil and gas companies operating offshore. President Ali says he has continuously reached out to the leader of the opposition, Mr. Joseph Harmon. How long are you going to continue on this road? 
how long are you going to continue to deny yourself the truth and sell your narrative that is filled with such falsehood? I am ready to speak to all guys, and I've been doing that. The question is, is the leader of the opposition ready to speak to the legitimately elected government? The president reissued the call to the opposition leader to do the right thing and to stop pushing a false narrative. I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you now, that the leader of the opposition needs to recognize the government and the, the, the president. And I don't want no implicit recognition. He must go there publicly and say the government uh, that he that is legitimate and he's recognizing the government and the president and he and, and then let's talk. His Excellency journeyed to the Hoop Mahaika on Friday to join family and friends of the Kurt Pauls for the funeral service of their 20-month-old son, Aiden, who died after the vehicle his father was reversing accidentally ran over him. President Ali, who is himself the father of a toddler, urged the Kurt Pauls to lean on their fate during this sad time. He offered his sympathies to Aiden's family, laid a wreath in his honor, and reinforced the importance of fate during times of sorrow. We have to be strengthened by faith. And faith gives us an understanding that we don't have control over everything. And it is those little things that we don't have control of that we have to rely on the Creator to grant us the strength, to grant us the faith, to grant us the understanding. The President noted that losing a child is one of the most heart-wrenching pains a parent can feel and that he understands the void that is left in their lives. He said that there is no doubt that Aiden brought tremendous joy and happiness to the family. The essence of the family has to do with the development of children themselves. We celebrate our children's accomplishments, just like our parents would have celebrated our accomplishments. So one can only imagine the pain of a parent, the pain of a family, when we have to let go of that joy. There is no words. I am lost for words to express to this family. Relatives, friends and members of the community turned up to pay their respects to the lad and to comfort his grieving parents. President Ali was accompanied by Chief Executive Officer of the Guyana Office for Investment, Dr. Peter Ramsroop, Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Mr. Lennox Schumann, Member of Parliament, Mr. Faisal Jafar Ali and Justice Retired Cecil Kennard. The president on Saturday morning paid tribute to the late Kausila, also known as Alice, for her unwavering stance in fighting for sugar workers. Kausila was killed on March 6, 1964, during an industrial strike at Plantation Lenora, West Coast Demerara. President Ali laid a wreath at her grave and delivered a tribute honoring her commitment and sacrifice to the country. Death to Comrade Kausila left her name eternally marked in the history books and in the history of Guyana. She is still alive. She is still honored. Her name will continue for generations. And why would her name continue? Because she made the ultimate sacrifice for what she believed in. Kausila, along with several other women, stood resolutely on a bridge before a tractor ran them over, killing her and injuring the others. President Ali, while noting her sacrifice for the rights of workers, emphasized the need for government to ensure the rights of the sugar workers in Guyana are protected. The building of the sugar industry is part of the legacy of Kausila. The protection of the workers is part of our legacy. When we fail to protect the workers, when we stop protecting sugar, we are failing our legacy and we are going to stop protecting what she fought for. The head of state also on Saturday reaffirmed his government's commitment to creating the enabling environment for investment. 
The president was speaking at a sod turning ceremony for the Guyanese owned $3 billion boutique style Aden Hotel on Rob and Ornock Street, Georgetown. President Ali committed that the policies and incentives implemented would see investors benefiting from their returns. In this regard, the head of state says the administration is moving ahead with its energy mix program, which includes natural gas. This will see the reduction in energy costs by 50% and would benefit the people and businesses tremendously. You have to be bold and courageous in making a decision in creating the environment that will bring the investment to have the energy mix that will make you competitive. And that is what we are doing, bringing the energy mix to make us competitive. We have to have the right infrastructure. President Ali said investment in infrastructure that will lead to the creation of new opportunities and better conditions for the citizens and the expansion of growth is critical. We have to have the people with the right training and the right skills. Minister Onesh touched on it. We are now going to invest in a tourism and hospitality institute. We have to train thousands of Guyanese. With a level of investment that is coming in in the services sector, within three years, we have to have at least 3,000 Guyanese ready for the sector. The hotel falls under the best Western hotel and resorts franchise and will be the first of its kind in the Caribbean. Added to that, Arimu Investments Incorporated, the developer of the project, is a 100% Guyanese-owned company. On Saturday, His Excellency opened a two-day exhibition themed, We Lift. Women's entrepreneurs, we lead, we innovate, we flourish together. The exhibition highlights women in business, the creative arts, food, beauty, wellness, and other industries to commemorate International Women's Day on March 8. Addressing the gathering at the Arthur Chung Conference Center for the event, President Ali says focus is being placed on ways to increase household income. He said his government is working on a massive program to be implemented countrywide. Where we can have training, in the call centers and women who are homemakers, they can be part of that training so that they can also be exposed to an economic activity that would add to household income. Giving them a greater strength of character. President Ali underscored the importance of having the necessary economic investments to support social development in order to create a balanced society. If we do not have the economic changes and the economic opportunities to support the social development, then you will have political problems. It is just the nature of things. That is why the platform has to be built on economic, social, political, and cultural basis. The head of state says his administration is looking at programs for women which are built on six characteristics. These include greater participation, empowerment, enhanced livelihood options, a more secured environment, stronger families, and ensuring that our institutions and national framework address the challenges faced by women in a holistic manner. This has been the President's Diary, where we took a look at His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali's week of activities. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week.